This episode will deal with the various personal identifications of Central American Latinos and their perceptions of discrimination based on their ethnicity. Latinidad is an emerging keyword in the field of Latin studies. It is an analytical concept that positions people of Latin American and Caribbean descent living in the United States. However, Latinidad does not denote a single discursive formation, but rather a multiplicity of intersecting discourses. Regional, national, and political identities intersect within a larger rubric of Latino. Latino communities create Latinidad through self-definition and self-representation. They are rooted in histories of conquest, colonization, processes of racialization, economic and political subordination, collaboration, negotiation, and cultural and political struggles. Latinidad is likewise internally shaped by racial discourses, processes of racialization, and racism. In short, there are significant socioeconomic, linguistic, racial, generational, and gender differences, as well as mutual interactions, transculturation, conflicts, and power struggles among Latinos. Significa la Latinidad, pues para mí es un conjunto de de Latino. <laughs> to be honest, I've never heard of the word, and I have no idea what it means. I think Latinidad is the way that you express yourself here in the United States as a Latino and the way that you connect with the Latin American countries while you're here in the United States and while you're abroad as well. I think Latinidad also has a lot to do with your home upbringing, your food, your style. I think it has to do with the way that your family brought you up and the way that you communicate yourself with other Latinos. Latino identity needs to be understood as struggles between notions of the self and the constructions imposed from the outside, such as other individuals, institutions, and discourses. Most notably, there are different struggles among economic immigrants, political refugees, exiles, and native-born historical and racial minorities that have structured distinct Latino lives. These diverse experiences, identities, and power dynamics account for the construction of a new social image. We can see a unique formation of separate identities, that of the Latino and the Latin American. First and foremost, I identify as American. And if it comes to hanging out with friends or if it comes to any sort of other identification, I identify as Dominican and Costa Rican as well. Me identifico como una puertorriqueña 100%, aunque vivo afuera. Y la timidez para mí es una combinación de crear una continuidad de ser latino y de esa cultura latina, aunque vivo afuera de tu país natal. Uh, when people ask me or when I am putting out applications, I identify as Afro-Latino, uh, Afro-Latina being, you know, feminine. Uh, being that my dad was born in the Dominican Republic and my mom was born in Puerto Rico. Even though uh, Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, I self-identify as Puerto Rican rather than American. With the growing number of Latinos here in the United States, um, there's been a love for our culture, our food, our music, and frankly, our work as well, our participation in the labor force, and being able to communicate in Spanish with another person on the job because they also speak Spanish makes me feel really proud. The Central American identity in of itself is problematic to both the Latino identity and the Anglo-U.S. American identity. It is neither one or the other, and Central American Latinos are oftentimes overlooked or misrepresented. There is a sense of Central American impropriety, or the inability to properly represent a stereotypical immigrant narration in the U.S., Central Americans constitute a population that has seemingly not yet earned the privilege of recognition within the multicultural landscape of the United States. The Central American experience is independent and irreducible to a singular definition of grouping. Oftentimes, because of the fact that they don't have to cross a direct border, I feel like most people that come from Central America have to have um, somewhat of a financial 
advantage um, than other people in their country to just be able to get here, with the exception, of course, of um, countries such as Honduras, El Salvador, some of these other countries which have had wars and kind of find refuge here in the U.S. just for safety. As far as how I'm perceived by other Central Americans, for the most part, it happens just like it happens with regular Americans where everybody just assumes that I'm white and because of my lack of accent. I perceive other Central American people or just Latin Americans just the way they portray themselves. Um, I don't judge them because they come from another background or anything like that. I just get to know them and that's the way I, per I perceive them, just the way they are. Immigrant experience is influenced by the assimilation process among the American society that causes the individual to feel either accepted or discriminated. Racial ideology appears at the cultural level through art, literature, science, cinema values, and beauty standards, and at the institutional level through education, healthcare, political, and economic systems. To be honest, I don't think I ever have felt that way. Um, I get such a mixture of questions, a confusion of people asking me if I have any Asian influence, if I have Hispanic, if I'm white, if I have European influence. And so I think the lack of certainty of people about my race and my culture definitely uh, doesn't allow them to just pick one specific thing to criticize. Eh, como pienso que me percibes en, en Estados Unidos, pues nadie me reconoce como puertorriqueña. Todo el mundo que habla español son mexicanos, aunque no sean mexicanos, pero para ellos lo es. Y de forma positiva, eso es como de forma negativa, de forma positiva, bueno, pues se interesan más por eh, de dónde eres, ya cuando vienen y les comentas de dónde eres, se eh, empieza a interesar un poco más sobre tu, tu nacionalidad. No estoy discriminada ni por mis amistades ni por mi trabajo, pero sí he sido discriminada en otras partes que me han dicho que yo no soy blanca o, o me mencionan cosas despectivamente, pero... Piensan que por nuestro color y nuestro el idioma que, que hablamos, yo pensé que de, darlo el mejor ejemplo para no venir a a hacer cosas en, en este país porque, porque realmente a veces por, por ser latino piensas que todos somos iguales porque cuando uno viene a, a tomar o, o meterse con la, con la pandilla o a veces en drogarse y, y a veces por culpa de uno lo, lo culpan a todos. Overall, I have not felt discriminated because of my race or ethnicity. Um, there have been situations where I have encountered people who, who think of Puerto Ricans as members of the third world country. We don't know anything about technology or we don't know anything about the world because we're just this island in the Caribbean. But um, I've been lucky to have met people who are open and want to hear more about Puerto Rico and don't have preconceived ideas of what Puerto Ricans are or what Puerto Rico is like. So although I'm very confident of myself and I don't always feel discriminated but it's something that it happens. It happens all the time. It, not only to me, it happens to other people. It doesn't matter what their um, ethnicity is. This episode has shown that not all Central American Latinos think alike. In fact, they oftentimes contradict each other in their personal and societal viewpoints. And this is the exact definition of the ambiguity of the Central American Latino identity.